I wonder what happened to all them folks that was here this morning. I'm thankful to see all of you, and I'm glad you're back. Tonight, what I'd like to do for you, I want you to raise your hand if you want to answer. That way we don't all answer together, and you don't get to cheat, okay? Now, when I say that, I say that not being mean. But when I ask you this question, was there any questions on there that you had problems with that you had to look in your Bible? Anybody want to raise your hand to that? Guess what? There was one on that I had to look for too. Okay? Now, all the rest of you, y'all are honest, right? Y'all did everything the way you were supposed to. You didn't, uh, didn't look in your Bible and you answered as many as you possibly could. So, that means that some of you actually answered all of them without having to look in your Bible. Anybody, anybody able to do that? I can't raise my hand to that now. I told you I missed one. I don't see no hand. Okay, let's take our, and I want you to, I want you to raise your hand because I'm going to call on different people tonight. We're going to go through our test. We may have a little bit of time left. I don't know. It'll just depend on how things work to be able to look at this. Now, what we concentrated on here was the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And everybody, you know, that's good. Okay, so, first question. Book of Matthew, that's where we're at. Raise your hand now, don't answer out. Who wrote it, and who was it written to? He wrote it to the Jews, and Matthew wrote Matthew. Now, how many chapters... Twenty-eight. That's okay. Hey, I, I miss them too. No problem. Twenty-eight. Good. We want to look at a general theme. Now, when I say a general theme, basically speaking, that's an overall picture of what that book is actually talking to me about. Now, if Matthew wrote it, he's a Jew, and he's writing to the Jews, what really and truly is he covering as a general override Theme. Who wants to tell me? Okay. The death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. Very good. Very good. Okay. Now, after we looked at that, and this was something that I, I would hope that you, you know, there's two ways to look at this. Who was Matthew's father? You could say, I. Huh? Alphaeus. Okay. Now, there were, no, 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 but here's another one. And somebody says, well, you know, what was the other one? Who was it? Okay. No. It was God, the Heavenly Father. You know, somebody said, I want to answer it that way. And I said, is that, they come and said, well, is that going to be all right if I answer it that way? Yeah, Alphaeus, but the Heavenly Father, God, okay? Got you. All right, here, you can answer both ways. Okay, let's look at this one. Important verses that dealt with the church. Now, this one, I, I just kind of pushed you into a specific area. Anybody going to raise your hand? Okay, Luane. Very good. Matthew 16, 16 through 18. I included 19 with mine on my sheet. Yeah, Matthew 16. And if you look through 16 through 19, you remember what that, anybody remember, this is not one of your questions. Anybody remember what that was about? Okay. He said, upon this rock I shall build my church. That rock was that confession that he said, this is the Son of God. 
you know. That's exactly right. Okay, good, very good. What chapter and verse are the apostles found in? Okay. Did you know that without looking? <laughs> Matthew chapter 10, 1 through 4. Now, last time Miss Vicky fixed some things over here, I want you to learn them in the order that they're in in Matthew chapter 10, 1 through 4. Let me tell you something. They're in other places in the Bible. There's other scriptures that name these apostles. But this is the one I want you to, to, to remember in order. You know, can we say them? And all of us can say them together. We didn't do too good last time. Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew. Thaddeus. And what now? Somebody missed that one. James the one they call the less Thaddeus, Simon, and Judas. Okay? Learn them in that order. Okay? Now, that's the easiest way to do it. Somebody said, well, I sing that little jingle that you learned when you were a small child. Peter, Andrew, James, and John. You know, but if you sing that little jingle, you're going to learn them in this particular order. Now, if you don't know them, let me tell you. Miss Vicky, she did them, and if you don't have one of these, one of these boys... When, it's, when we're finished tonight, if anyone will raise our hand, anybody wants them, this is, this is the list. I want you to name them by. And remember those. Now, I told you before, before I go to the next book in Mark, uh, let's just finish this answer and then we'll get one more, okay? We found the chapter, Matthew 10, verses 1 through 4. The, la the other question was, what was the occupation of the author of this book? Michelle, he was a tax collector, which was called a, a publican, okay? Now, before we leave that book of Matthew, there's something I told you in particular that I want you to, to think about. You know, when you think about the crucifixion, he's probably the more, maybe not so much the more than that of Luke, but Matthew really and truly depicts more so of the crucifixion and he brings it down to a level where uh, really and truly everybody ought to take the time to read it. Does anybody know what chapter that is in the book of Matthew? It's chapter 27. And I want you to, everybody just take your Bibles and when you go home tonight, before you go to bed, read because, you know, everybody says, well, this is Easter Sunday. This is no more important than any other Sunday. This is the first day of the week. This is Easter Sunday. This is the time the third day is celebrated for the resurrection, like we had our lesson on this morning. Just go home and read Matthew chapter 27, if you will, and, and read about the crucifixion of Christ. And just, just read that for the, for the premise of, of what we're doing. Now let's go to the book of Mark. Let's see if we can answer these questions. Who is the author of the book of Mark? Now you, Mark. Okay. He had a Hebrew name, and his name in Hebrew was none of you boys back there raising your hand up. What's the problem over here? You know. All right, you boys, I quizzed y'all. Why don't you give me that when you want to go? Huh? John Mark. John Mark. Okay. Hebrew name, John. How many chapters does it have? Anybody out in the audience? How many chapters? Huh? Sixteen. Very good. I want a key verse in the book of Mark that deals specifically with baptism. Now raise your hand. Sandy. Okay. And it says. <laughs> and it says. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be condemned. Think about that now. Do y'all like the test? I mean, this just makes you think. I mean, really and truly. Uh, I want you to remember because you, you go through this and then something happens and this old boy caves in on you and I don't get to teach you anymore, but you need to know this book. You need to know these things. Now, name... May, a major event 
with the disciples. A major event happened in Mark. That's one of the saddest things that you read in the entire Bible other than that of the crucifixion of Christ. And does anybody know what that is? Anybody want to raise their hand? Okay. For they forsook the Lord. The disciples forsook the Lord. Do you know where it's at? Okay. In Mark chapter 14, the Bible says the disciples forsook him. And it says all of them. Now that, that's, that to me is one of the saddest things for the disciples to have forsaken the Lord Jesus. Now, all right, we went through that of Mark. Let's go back now to the book of Luke. First of all, and I, I changed this up a little bit so you could do, how many chapters does it have? 24. What is the occupation of the author of this book? Kimbo, he's a physician, he's a doctor. What is, who is the recipient of this writing? Now this is a little bit tricky. Elaine? Everybody, all the Christians, Jew and Gentile. Now, what was the author's citizenship? I wondered if anybody picked up on that. Huh? Huh? Roman citizen. Was the author an apostle? Now, this is very important. Was the author of this book, Luke, was he an apostle? No. He was not an apostle. He's not with Peter, Andrew, James, and John, Philip, Bartholomew, and Thomas, and Matthew, and James, and Les, and Thaddeus, and Simon, and Judas. He was not one of them, right? Okay. Good. <sighs> Name the chapter that parables appear in. Name the chapter that the parables... By the way, before we answer that question, what is a parable? Marilyn, you had your hand up. Okay. Luke chapter 15, Marilyn says where the parables are, and she's exactly right. What is a parable? Amy? All right. It's a, it's a short story that depicts or makes or brings to, to for fruition a lesson. Okay. Now, the parables in this, what are the parables? And this is one of the, what does the parables represent? What does the parables represent? There's one word you could use. Okay. Huh? Something that's lost. Does anybody remember anything about those parables? What were those parables? Lost coin, lost sheep, lost son. Okay? So if I said, hey guys, where's the parables at in the Bible that deals with the lost coin, the lost sheep, and the lost son? What y'all going to tell me? Luke chapter 15. Good. All right. What does the parables represent we got? Now, let's go to the book of John. Let's go to the book of John. John, how many chapters does this book have in it? Now, Betty, I, seven, seven. What special statement is made of this author that is not made of others? Special statement about John, Nick. Beloved by Jesus. Very good. What verse is the most quoted verse in the entire Bible? John 3.16, what's it? Say. Say it out, baby. Very good. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Anybody know the other verse right immediately after that? Sent not his son. Dim the world. 
that the world through him might be saved. Okay? Very good. Very good. I'm proud of y'all. Now, what was his position in the demise or death of the apostles? Huh? He's the last one. He's the last apostle to live. The other apostles has already been either crucified, killed, put to death. We find John in the last book in the Bible on the Isle of Patmos. He's in exile and he writes the book of Revelations. Okay? All right. What does Jesus reveal at his last supper? Tina? He does going to die, but he also reveals something else. The one that betrayed him. Who was that? Judas Iscariot. And who was it that replaced him? Matthias. And where did I find that at? And it's not on this page. That's right, Steve. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 2. Okay. Now. Yes, ma'am. Okay. There's there's more than one Judas. In fact, there's several in the Bible, Judas's. Okay. Judas Iscariot, the one that betrayed the Lord, that's the one in Acts chapter two when they cast the lots. To when they're in the upper room. You remember in Acts chapter two? That's the one that they cast the lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias. There was two chosen. There were two men chosen there. One of them was Joseph. The other was Matthias. And whenever they cast the lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he's the one that took over Judas Iscariot's place. Now, Judas, the other Judas, is another. He's not an apostle. But Judas is another person there that carries the gospel. He's not an apostle. Now, tonight... We're going to read a little bit more of what she just asked me about. And we're going to read a little bit from chapter 2 tonight. Remember in Acts, who wrote the book? Who wrote this book? Huh? No. No. Luke. Luke wrote the, 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 uh, the book of Acts. What does the word Acts actually mean? Now, I'm going to give you all a test from, from Acts on, you know. 1 Corinthians, Galatians, and Ephesians. And you're going to get a test on each one of these. What does the word Acts represent? I? The actions and acts of the apostles. Okay? Now, we learn in chapter 1 and chapter 2, we're trying to get together here with the beginning of something that's so vital to all of our understanding. What begins in chapter 2 of the book of Acts? The beginning of the church, which is notably not referred to as church, but it's referred to as, anybody got kingdom, okay, kingdom. Very important. Now, I want to read to you tonight, as, as we're talking about this, some of these things that, that we're going to go over again. You'll get a test now. On, and I may just do three books this next time to give you all a little advantage. Uh, when the day of Pentecost, and I want you to remember this, this is very important. Somebody says, well, I, I've never understood that. Pentecost. Do you remember what I told you Pentecost was? What was that? Anybody know what that was? Pentecost. It's a Jewish feast. Okay? Every year they held a Jewish feast where the Jews all came together at one particular place. This is a celebration of worship. They come together every year at one place. It's in Jerusalem. It's on the day of Pentecost. Each feast that we, we find in the Bible, the Feast of the Weeks, the Feast of Day, this Pentecost feast is 50 days past the Passover feast. There was a Passover feast that the Jews celebrated to celebrate the passing over of the death angel. You know, if you go back to the Old Testament, and all of you remember that, 
in the Old Testament. You know what happened there in the Old Testament? The Passover feast. Jesus says, when they're trying to get the children of Israel from under the Pharaoh's God, you know, he has them as slaves. And, and the Lord says, you know, he's going to let the people go. But all, you remember all these things that God did and all the frogs and the lice and the, you, you remember all that? When it came down to it, here we have, God says, you go, you put the blood on the top. You put the blood on the side. And when the death angel passes over tonight, all the firstborn of the children of Israel, you know, I mean, uh, all the firstborn of the Gentiles is going to die. The, the, these people that were holding God's people hostage, and they had made slaves of them. He said, the Egyptians, they're going to die. But if you put the blood on the top and on the sides, when the death angel passes over, he'll see that blood, and the firstborn in that family will not die. And this was God's people. Now, here's what happened. The death angel passed over. Then from that time on, hundreds of years, even in 2,000 years, the Jews celebrated a Passover feast. They all got together, celebrated when the death angel passed over, and the children of Israel, they lived the firstborn. They didn't die as it was the Pharaoh's people. So this was a Jewish feast. Cause feast was 50 days past that, which was another feast they celebrated. Now, at the celebration of the Pentecost, this was the day that God had decided that this is what we're going to do. The church is going, the kingdom is going to be established. They thought this kingdom is, are we going to reestablish the kingdom of Israel? No, 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 we're not. We're going to establish the Lord's church. This is the church he's talking about. Now, I read to you last week, if you'll remember, they were all there, and there were 17 different nationalities of Jews that were here celebrating the Pentecost. There was a big problem that these Jews had. There were 17 different nationalities. They themselves was like people from other countries. They were different nationalities from different places. You know what they couldn't do? Anybody know what was the problem? They had a communication problem. They could not understand each other. Isn't that something? If somebody came in here tonight and was speaking Chinese to me, or Japanese to me, I, I couldn't understand it. But you see, on this particular day, we got the Lord's disciples, his apostles. We got them there. Peter begins to preach to them on this time. He's up before them. He says, you take it by wicked hands, kill the Son of God. Okay. The Bible said they were pricked in their heart. You know what happens here when they're pricked in their heart? They said, men and brethren, what should we do? You know, what do we, what do we need to do to re remedy this? This is the beginning of the church. But the most important thing about 17 different nationalities of Jews, when Peter was speaking, does anybody remember what was going on here? What was going on when Peter was speaking to 17 different countries, nationalities of Jews? What was happening with these people? Say it again, J.B. Everyone, Everyone was hearing it in their own tongue. Oh, have you ever heard people say, so-and-so over there speaking in tongues? Such a sad thing. Here's what speaking in tongues really was. It was just the simplicity of the miracle that God himself placed upon those that were there. They could hear in their own dialect. Now, Peter didn't speak 17 different languages. He's speaking one. And they were hearing in their own dialect. So it's not a problem there. It's pretty easy to, uh, to understand, if you will. Now, in thinking about this, Peter stood up with the eleven. The Bible said in verse number 14 of chapter 2, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my works. You know what the problem was that these people first thought was going on with the fact that they could hear this in their own dialect and Peter was preaching? You know what they actually thought was happening? Anybody know what was going on? They thought these poor fellows was drunk. 
that something was going on that was completely foreign. It was funny. And they said, are they drunken? Early in the morning they were seized. No, no. No, not according to the Scripture. The Bible says, for these are not drunken. As you suppose, seeing that it is but the third hour of the day. This is early in the morning. This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. You all remember the prophet Joel that we studied in the Old Testament? And the Bible said, And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I'll pour out all of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood. And before that great and notable day of the Lord come, it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now a lot of people use this in, in trying to justify something other than what it takes to be saved. All in the world you have to do is call upon the name of the Lord and you can be saved. That's what the Bible says. But you see, they stop short of the understanding of what really and truly these men were doing. They were bringing the message from the Spirit, which we talked about the Holy Spirit. You remember? This is God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Spirit. They're talking about the things that came from the Spirit of God. And God's Spirit. The Bible says, you men of Israel, hear these words. That Jesus, a man of God, among, them, among you by miracles and wonders and signs. You remember what I said this morning from the pulpit, those of you that were here? About these things that happened with the resurrection. All the miracles that was performed. The miracles and the wonders and the signs which God did by him in the midst of you as you yourself do know. And as it goes on, when you find yourself here, and think about this for just a moment. It comes down to a point where Peter's telling them, and this is what he says, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus whom you have crucified. He's made him both Lord and Christ. And I'm over in verse 36. When they heard this, I want you to notice this now because our time's getting away. When they heard about Jesus, what Peter has said, the Bible simply says, remember this guys, I'm going to ask you this question on the test. What did these people do? What happened to these people? The Bible said they were pricked in their heart. You know what that means? They understood the message that Peter had brought to them about killing and crucifying the Son of God. And they said, Lord, we did kill the Son of God. Men and brethren, what shall we do? What are we going to do about this? The Bible said they were pricked in their heart. They, they were touched. They... They understood the guilt that they had for what they had done. Now we find in the passage, the Bible says, <clears throat> Peter said unto them, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. Now think about this. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. A lot of people never studied their Bible long enough, hard enough to understand what this verse actually means. They were pricked in their heart. They wanted to know what to do. He said, first of all, you become sorrowful because you killed the Son of God. Secondly, after this, you repent of this. You become sorrowful and you be baptized. Wash away your sins. For the remission of sins. That's what that means. So what did Peter tell them to do? Somebody tell me. What did Peter tell them to do? Acts 2, 38. I'm going to ask you that question a thousand times on the test. You'll have it one time, but you need to know that one if you don't know nothing else about the book of Acts. And then Acts 2, 38 says what? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. This is how you're going to remedy what you did. What did you do? You killed the Son of God. This is how you're going to remedy that. This is what's going to save you. For all these people who teach otherwise, 
And there are a lot of good people that teach otherwise. Don't get me wrong. I'm not putting anybody down, but I'm telling you. They're not teaching the truth when they tell you that all you have to do is to accept Christ and be saved. To accept Christ is to accept what was said here to have the beginning of the church. You repent, you be baptized, and you wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. But you do so for the remission of sins. This is what we have to do in order to be forgiven of our sins. Now, as we look at this, the Bible says, Peter said unto them, Repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, you're going to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. He said, for this, the promise is unto you and to your children and to all them that are far off. And when many, with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Now, the Bible said, then they that gladly receive, that's the people that listen. If you gladly receive, you're listening. And that's what these people were doing. And those that gladly received, according to the scripture now, think about this, they were baptized. That same day, there was added, now listen to what it says, there was added unto them about 3,000 souls. So the church began in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. Peter's the preacher. He's telling these people what to do, repent and be baptized, calling on the name of the Lord, do it for the remission of your sins, and guess what? 3,000 people obeys the gospel. 3,000 people is baptized into Christ. The church had its beginning. There we have the very beginning of what we're about today. For all the many thousands from that time on who understood and has done exactly what these people did. Repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Okay, my time just about whopped on me, but here's what I want to close out with tonight. The Bible says after this, the church began. They continued steadfastly. They continued to do exactly what they were told in the apostles' doctrine and the fellowship and the breaking of bread. Did you get that part? What were they doing? They continued in the apostles' doctrine in the breaking of bread. What do we do each and every Sunday? Breaking of the bread. Okay? Taking of the blood of Christ. and partaking, Breaking of the bread. Okay? Now, think about this. They continued steadfastly. All that believed were together and had all things common. So we don't have a problem with the beginning of the church. What chapter in the Bible tells me about the beginning of the church? Where is it at? Chapter 2 of what book? And who wrote it? And who was the preacher? Peter. And what did he tell them? Hmm? To, he told them to repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of your sins. Okay? You've got to think about now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a test on this. Now, I won't give you a test next week. Because we've got some more stuff we're going to do. But tonight our time has moved by. So uh, if there's anybody in our audience tonight who needs to respond to the invitation of the gospel in any way, if you need to respond from the standpoint you are an erring child of God, being that you have not yet, uh, if you have obeyed the gospel and been baptized for the mission of your sins and, and you haven't done what you need to do and you need to respond to repent, and we're here ready, willing, and able to pray for you. If you need to respond and be baptized for the mission of your sins, if you haven't done that, I encourage you to do so. Tonight we learned just a little bit more. Y'all did well on your test. I'm proud of all of you, and we'll continue on. So let us stand together tonight and extend the invitation of the gospel. And if there's anybody here that needs to re respond, please do so right now while together we stand and sing. Number 124. I apologize. You can't thank me. I haven't got something to thank with, so I forgot to.